Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Mr. Simone and I'm doing just a brief little essay review for our social studies midterms at Florida Park Memorial. So this is for the 10th graders who will probably be asked either to write a question about uh, famous leaders or they might be asked to write a question about turning points. And Martin Luther, a member of the leader of the Protestant Reformation, actually fits for both of those essays. So this will just be a quick little PowerPoint with me speaking over it for you to use uh, as much as possible, hopefully on your phone while you're walking to class uh, in the halls would be great, uh, maybe even on your way to school or home from school. So there is Martin Luther. Now, he was... He was born in Germany, although it wasn't Germany at the time. Those of you who remember, Germany was not unified until the 1870s. Uh, but early on, his father wanted him to be a lawyer. And while he was studying uh, in school, he was struck by lightning. And at the time, you know, fearful that he may not make it alive, he said that if he did, he would um, devote his life to religion. He felt it was a sign of God that he survived that, that uh, terrible tragedy. Uh, so he entered a monastery... But while the monastery continued uh, to study the Bible. Now, at this time, the Catholic Church was incredibly powerful. Uh, after the fall of the Roman Empire, there really wasn't one country that dominated Europe. It was really the Catholic Church. So the dominance of the Catholic Church is going to be seen all throughout the European continent and throughout everybody's lives. Uh, even the popes, and there are obviously many of them, the popes had so much power. We look at the pope today as a religious figure, but at that time the popes really had political control over the region. Now, the Catholic Church was engaging in some practices that, you know, people like Martin Luther found uh, frustrating and troubling. One of them are these indulgences. And the indulgences, just want to use my pen here, were if people committed a sin, today you would go to confession and, and the, the priest would absolve you of those sins. But in the uh, medieval times, the Catholic Church wanted you to pay to get absolved of those sins. Those were called indulgences. And that really was very frustrating in, uh, to somebody like Martin Luther. In addition, it was really difficult for people to even understand some of the church sermons. If they were spoken in Latin, most people didn't speak Latin at the time. So they didn't really understand what the, um, what the teachings uh, of, of the priests at the time uh, were, were saying to the people. Then we have something called simony, which was when they were actually selling religious positions to whoever would give them the most money. Um, and on top of all that, these religious leaders were living very luxurious lifestyles, uh, while so many people are struggling in poverty. So these are not the, the beliefs and the practices that somebody, you know, like Martin Luther adhered to at the time. So, his response is to criticize, in really like a questioning format, the practices of the church. And he calls it his 95 theses. But it really wasn't, it wasn't like an attack. It was really more just a way of him asking the church to maybe reflect on what they were doing. So he takes these 95 theses, and we believe that in 1517, he posted them on the doors of the Wittenberg Church in Germany. This really becomes the beginning, the foundation of the Protestant Reformation. And look at the root words. He is protesting, so that is where Protestant, and he's trying to create reforms, reformation. Uh, I said here again, his tone was more questioning instead of attacking. And what really helps spark the Protestant Reformation is the fact that in the 1400s, um, I believe 1453, but I could be wrong on that, Johann Gutenberg invented the printing press. And now this allows books like the Bible to be printed at a faster rate and in people's own national languages. That word vernacular describes that. So now people could actually read the Bible for themselves. So Martin Luther's efforts are, are very significant in the course of, of history. But now what happens as a result of it? Well, the Catholic Church does respond. First, they ask Luther, or they demand, that he 
takes back his views that is called to recant, but he just will not do so. So then they kick him out of the church completely. He's excommunicated under Pope Leo the uh, Leo the Tenth. But now, because of what Martin Luther did, all these new religions will form throughout Europe. So you have Protestantism, which is the fairly large umbrella under Christianity, but you have people like you have Lutherans, and later we will have Baptists, and there's a man, John Calvin, who will create a religion called Calvinism, which is a very strict religion in terms of your lifestyle. But the Catholic Church tries to fix some of the issues that Martin Luther addressed in what they call the Council of Trent, but not enough to unify everybody. And as a result of this long term, there are going to be a lot of religious wars throughout Europe. Uh, and one of the most tense was the Thirty Years' War, which is between Protestants and Catholics. So, and then if you wanted to end it, you can talk about how even today we still have problems and conflicts between various religions. So I hope that helps people. I tried to get it in five minutes. It's six. But I hope it gives you an idea. Keep watching. Keep reviewing. Keep studying this. And uh, hopefully you can write a good, solid, maybe you get to know two, two different people or two different turning points. But hopefully this will give you a good, solid uh, beginning to your essay. Take care, everybody.